Hello, everyone. Today is Thursday, August 25th, 2022. This is a week in charts. I'm just going to thank all you guys and girls for attending. I think I'm doing a little bit better job of getting the word out there. The good news is if you register once, you're registered for all, all unless I mess something up over the next six months or so, davelearner.com slash webinar. Register even if the date is old, which it likely will be. So we talk about, well, obviously current market conditions, your questions on trading, your favorite stock picks and crypto picks too. I guess I need to stop making a big deal about crypto since we've been doing that for quite a while. Now over the past, I guess about a month or so ago, maybe a little longer, I said crypto still trying to wake up and we'll have to scratch that out for tonight. And we'll get to that in just one second. I wanna talk about the VIX. The thing about the VIX is the VIX only matters when it matters. And recently I think it has begun to matter again and the main focus tonight is going to be how to change your life and trading for free this is flame screen as you know you can lose money trading or as often summing up all predictions or about the future and a lot of stuff can happen between now and then thank you to greg morris for giving me that one all right let's jump right into this vix thing this is the vix template that i use which should be fairly easy to recreate and if not i can give you all my formulas which you should be able to see the whole formulas on all this but anyway the background i have the s p 500 there's the 10-day simple moving average and of course the vix is the chart we're focusing on the s p 500 is just to give us a little bit of a reference now this little indicator I programmed in here pretty simple formula just a percentage of how far away the open and the close is away from the moving average. When I started this research, or, or I should say when I restarted this research, the VIX stuff began, I guess, in 1995, and just a little history lesson real quick. By accident, I ended up with working for consulting with Larry Connors, and I was doing some programming of systems and testing of systems and larry liked things because larry liked me because he said i was a gem because i knew a little bit about trading and i also knew a little bit about programming so i could program the system and if his systems didn't work i could noodle with them a little bit to see whether or not there was something there that he thought about conceptually and he did a lot of research with the VIX and he explained to me how the VIX worked. And I never heard of the VIX. Well, actually I heard of it because he wrote a book called Investment Secrets of a Hedge Fund Manager. And in that book, he said you it's like a buy and sell when the VIX is above or below 15. And, and that no longer works because the VIX is now usually way, way above 15. And, and I don't know if we'll ever see a VIX below 15 again. We'll have to... We'll have to see, but taking that research one step forward, I begin to normalize it and use moving averages and things like that and literally take what he said about the reversion to the mean and begin noodling with that. So this is what we're looking at tonight is when the VIX gets stretched away. So the open became fairly important when I when I dusted off a lot of this research, especially because where I'm going with this, and there there is a multi-day facet to it and that's where all the systems were and if you go in and look at some of the vix stuff that i published in my first two books or the first book at least that stuff printed money for a while but you go look at some of it like during a pandemic and when you're holding on multiple days when you get a buy signal and you hold on multiple days and the market begins to melt down it doesn't work as well and you can build a lot of profits so i went on this kick i guess it was several months back and maybe even a little bit longer if you look at the youtubes where i started studying the intraday relationships of this now the reason i'm saying a multi-day facet is when it gets stretched and stays stretched continue to look to play the long side of the market if it stretched to the upside as i'll ex explain in a little more detail in one second and then possibly play the short side of the market when it stretched to the downside over a period of days but the the real beauty of something like this i think is the intraday research because you're not or the intraday trades i should say because you're not holding overnight and exposing yourself to all 
that risk. And that's the downside of some of this short-term trading if you're just doing the short-term trading in and of itself, meaning swing trades, because occasionally you will get whacked and give up a lot of those gains. You need an open-ended characteristic to your trades, as I'm going to show you here in a few minutes with some of these longer-term winners, at least one or two that we have now in the portfolio. And hopefully it'll be three soon. I know I just said hold. But anyway, that's the open, that's the close. And the open's important because this isn't a great example. Is it an extreme example? But let's say that the open is, is way up here or whatever, and it really begins to implode. Then you might look to play the SVXY or possibly go along futures or possibly these leverage direction funds for an index such as SBXL or something like that, or play the VIX in and of itself. Now, this is the VIX range, and I did a lot of presentations on this prior, and this is, most of these were done earlier this year. So if you go to my YouTube channel, Dave Leonardy, Dave, if you go to my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash C as in Charlie, slash Dave Landry, you can look at those presentations where I've explained this in a lot more detail. So I don't want to completely reinvent the wheel, but I also want to get everybody up to speed on the VIX. And the range, the reason I have this down here is you want to see that range begin to expand before you look to play the VIX because it could quiet down for a long time. So there's the formula right there. And I'll explain that in a, few, in a little more detail in just one second. Okay, so what does it all mean? Well, volatility tends to be a reversion to the mean market. And what's interesting is I'll see people say, well, the VIX is a cup and handle, or VIX is this, and the VIX is that. And I think to myself, no, you, you, you're kind of missing the point. It, it doesn't work that way. What you're measuring is volatility, and nuances of volatility are that it reverts to its mean. In other words, if it gets stretched to one side, it tends to snap back. And one thing that Connor and I, uh, Larry Connors and I noodle with quite a bit is it tends to overshoot when it snaps back. And I think that's what makes some of this VIX stuff work so well. And in general, and there's lots of caveats and nuances to learn about when it comes to the VIX, you want to buy when it's stretched to the upside and you want to short when it's stretched to the downside. When it's stretched to the downside, people become very complacent. Now, just real quick, without going into a lot of detail, as I've done before, remember the VIX measures both puts and calls, okay? So it's not like it's measuring one side of the market. It's measuring both the puts and the calls. And I guess with put call parity, that becomes a bit of a wash anyway, but that's beyond the scope of this presentation and probably a little bit outside of my wheelhouse to get too far down that road. Anyway, again, with a stretch to the downside, you want to look to short the market or buy the VIX. And, and the research that I've done here and talked about quite a bit in prior presentations is based around an intraday type of trade. Now, this is still useful day over day, as I was alluding to a minute ago. For instance, I have a friend who's a little newer to S&P futures trading. And he does really well, and then he has some frustrations like us all. And S&P future trading, futures trading is a very, very, very tough way to trade, by the way. But anyway, the point I was talking to him about earlier today is that you want to try to have a bit of a bias to work around. Like right now, with the VIX being stretched, or at least was stretched coming into a day like today, you want to try to focus on the long side. Now, unfortunately... We didn't have a huge rally today like I was hoping. I don't know, hope in one hand and, and you know, markets, you should never hope. But <laughs> I digress. But what I was hoping for was the markets, the, the VIX would really implode and the market really take off. But we did have a little bit of a rally and some of the stuff did work, especially if you got in late in the day and were super, super patient. Now, I have some trades that worked out late in the day. Not enough to brag about, not enough to even bother showing you, but that's what I was going to base them on for tonight's presentation. So you can see coming into today, now this is a one day old chart. These two were stretched from an opening standpoint and from a closing standpoint too. And you can see you had your closes and your opens and they were both stretched. 
Now, one thing with the VIX is one of the buy signals is when the VIX closes below its open after it's been stretched. So again, when you're stretched to the upside, you're looking for that reversion to the mean move in the VIX back down to the mean. What's the mean? The mean is the average, same difference, right? Mean or average, they're interchangeable. And you wanna to look to buy or short the VIX or use one of those inverted shares. Now, here's a slide that I covered earlier this year. So I'm just gonna kind of go through it real quick again. It's it tends to revert back to the mean after being stretched, like like any market that's overbought or stretched. Stretch can always become more stretched, and you want some some sort of signal. He tried to say to happen before looking to get in, suggesting that reversion to the mean move has started, and that's what that little range indicator can come into play. Maybe if the range is below 50 percent, or maybe even 100 percent, if you want to be a little bit more sure. You don't want to play that reversion to the mean move just yet. You want to make sure the ball gets rolling. Let everybody else fight it out when it's just chopping around. So, again, a narrow range, or as I said before, I should say, like any intraday trading, a narrow range choppy bar would chew you up. And I do the same sort of thing with the ETFs. If you look at my old videos where I talk about the intraday ETF trading, I keep a range indicator on my charts, and usually if the range is less than 50% of its average true range, like I did with the VIX here, I try to leave those ETFs alone, unless it's a big opening gap reversal or something, because I'm measuring the intraday range on those. Now, again, if it's 50%, and ideally maybe 100% or more, maybe you're getting some sort of big reversion to the mean, and it might be worth trading. You want to use caution on inside days unless the prior bar is super wide. And again, a lot of this stuff does dovetail in or, or same sort of concepts can be used if you're intraday trading something like an ETFs. So again, you want to look at that intraday range and then maybe you want to look to short if it takes out the low of the day, provided you've got pretty good range or the high of the day on the flip side. Now, less is kind of more with this. So I would encourage you to maybe put some parameters into it. And, and as I said earlier, the VIX only matters when it matters. So maybe have some parameters in there where maybe you only take those 100% or more days or where it looks like it's gonna to get to at least 100% or more and, and jump on the market and let everybody, out, let everybody else again fight it out when it's not. And again, I know I've talked about this ad nauseum in the past, but it's such a complex subject. You have to I have to be really careful not to go too far down that rabbit hole. And the other thing, as I've said before, I've had people who are much smarter than me tell me that people on TV are often wrong about some of the things they say about the VIX. So make sure you fully understand it. And also the UVXY and the SVXY, this is gonna, I know, put you to sleep, right? <laughs> or a derivative of a derivative of a derivative, if I've got my math correct on that, third order derivative, because you start with the VIX itself, which is a derivative of options, which is a derivative, and then those are futures, which have their own nuances to them. But I think it's okay to go in and trade those on an intraday basis. I do not hold any VIX-related product overnight unless by accident, <laughs> which can, can hurt, we can uh, certainly hurt you if you're not careful. Okay, any questions on that stuff? I know I kind of blew through it, and it's a, kind of a complex, it's, it's, a, it's complex, but not that complex. You wait for the market to get stretched, the market be in the VIX, and you look for it to snap back. And, and you're either going to play futures, S&P futures, or uh, some sort of ETF futures, and possibly the VIX futures via UVXY or SVXY. Also, here's the other thing, too. For instance, today, and there's nothing really to brag about, and I really haven't made a whole lot of money intraday trading lately, so I don't want to brag about that or believe me, it's not worth bragging. But today, I was like, okay, well, I've got the market wins behind me a little bit because the VIX is stretched. 
and I saw the Sox L beginning to take off a little bit. So I went in and got a little piece of that. So that's the type of wind in your sails or wind at your back, I should say, that you might want to incorporate into your trading. Don't go hog wild with all this stuff, but use it as a tool to help make what you're doing even better. Okay, George says, do you use intraday inside bars for dis for decisions for short-term strength? Uh, usually, like I said a minute ago, and this kind of applies to ETF and to the VIX, unless the prior day's bar was super, super, super wide, okay, as long as you're within that inside bar, you need to think twice about trading. Now, if you see an expansion of range, then you can think about putting on intraday trade. Now, George, you're still working to perfect the core methodology. And I know you're like a sponge, you want to trade everything. Focus on that before venturing too far into this intraday stuff, unless you're doing it in a really, really small way. All right, any more questions on that? So last week and week before, good. Uh, last week, George says he's got it, good. Last week and week before, and I think maybe in the week before that in my trading simplified shows, I started talking a lot about acceptance. And that's that's a big issue that I see. People come in to trade my stuff and they're not willing to accept the nuances of it. But my question is, and of course I'm biased and I'll defend it to my death, right? Because it's my baby and I work really hard on this baby. But my question is, well, what are you comfortable with? And what what is your style of trading if my style is not your trading? Because to me, it makes a lot of sense going for a swing trade, risk are relatively low, although you can get hurt 2% of the time. If you get whacked 2% whack of the time a few times in a row, it starts to be getting hurt, right? But occasionally, you will catch that home run, as I'll show you in just one second. And the other thing is you have to accept that volatility comes with opportunity and accept a bumpy ride. Now, we covered this before. This was Verve, and this was the setup there. You can see, I'm going to kind of whiz through it real quick. Entry here, stop here, IPT here. Very, very wide, percentage-wise and point-wise, but we reduced our share size down considerably. So this is hypothetically a 100K account. I don't know if I have trades in this presentation, but I did buy 300 shares of this one for... Illustrative purposes, I did that in one account, and I may have a little bit more in some other accounts, but I don't want to. If I tell you how much I have, some of you will laugh, and other you will, other you, <laughs> the rest of you ask me for a loan. Anyway, so very wide stop, and you can see it didn't do a whole lot at first. And there's my buy right there. So I bought 300 in this one particular account. And you could see that it did rally up to the IPT. Now, I got out a little bit earlier on the half of the shares. And then, obviously, we're going to trail the stop higher. This is, the, this is what the service did on a mechanical basis. And the bumpy ride part is we took $1,000 profit. So that's banked. And now we have half the risk on, okay? But it's still... It's still substantial as far as the equity swings are concerned. So it's only, uh, I think, a basis of service, 125 shares. I have 150 shares on for illustrative purposes, real shares. But you could see on those remaining shares, you were up about 1600 bucks. It sold off pretty hard. Then you're only up $813. And we're going to look at the live portfolio in just one second and see where we are now. But that has swung way back up at least another thousand dollars from that down swing okay george says you rock thank you george you rock too man i like your uh i like your enthusiasm <laughs> enthusiasm is my second favorite asm my first is sarcasm all right the nature of the beast when it comes to volatility love volatility and volatility will love you Forget about percentage stops, as I said a few weeks back. Uh, it happens all the time. Every every couple of months, I get an email from somebody, I can't use a 20% stop. Well, then, then you don't get no Coke. You know, like as they said in Caddyshack, some of these stocks call for a 20% stop. 
something like Ver, very volatile, something like ARLP, which we'll take another look at. I know we're going to beat the dead horse on that one. We'll take another look at it, but that was like a 25% stop, and that's what it called for. Only one point, but it was like $4.89 at the time. So we're adjusting the share size down accordingly. And I've done presentations before, and I know that I have them on the back end of, of the website uh, for the gold members. And if you're a service member, you also have access to gold. And that'll probably stay that way for now. I always say for now, but that'll probably stay that way because you're paying up, and I appreciate that. And I also want to get you up to speed on the methodology. But I have presentations where I show that trading less volatile stocks is actually more volatile on your portfolio because every now and then one of those less volatile stocks will get whacked and you could have a lot more shares on we expect we know the nature of the beast as there's certain people i deal with my wife deals with uh, whatever and it's like they're a pain in the ass don't get me wrong but as i often tell my wife and, and she often tells me now stealing my line is they never break character. So you know what you're dealing with. You have a known quantity where, <laughs> God, I hate to pick on my friends. <laughs> it's not like we had that many. But other friends, it's like, God, you never know what you're going to get. You know, we'll get a phone call from one of them. Hey, I want to go out tonight. I'm like, are they farting? You know, it's like there's so many variables involved. Anyway, getting back to this. The, the nature of the beast, one thing you could do is reduce the number of observations. I talked with someone today, the aforementioned gentleman, and he said that he was watching the screen like a hawk. And I know that he's a day job. He should, be, he should have been focused on his day job and let that trailing stop just take him out, good, bad, or indifferent. And as I explained to him, if you get back to the neurology, I know you probably want to part, uh, want to party with me, but let's say you lose on a trade well that, that that has twice the emotional impact and then one of you guys said maybe 10 times based on your research but what i what i have here in neurology it's like two to three times and i think kennerman and Tversky probably did the research there i, I usually give them credit and 90 percent of the time i'm correct but many other people have piggybacked on that research if it's not them it might have been i'm trying to think of who else it could have been but there's other people out there that, that talk a lot about this in all these behavior finance, behavior science books. But if you lose on a trade, it has twice the impact as a gain. And that's what creates a gambler's ruin. And I figured there's another guy's name that's done a lot on, on this and it escapes me. But if you watch the uh, videos on the back of the website, I promise you I'll give him credit. So if you're a gambler, let's say you're up a thousand and then you lose a thousand, you're trying to make that thousand back and you keep getting further and further in the hole and you get more and more angry trying to make that money back. Well, guess what? An observation is just as bad, okay? And most of your observations, believe it or not, will be negative ones because the market back, backs and fills a lot. I've given complete presentations just on this. So by him watching that screen all day, he's gonna put himself into a downward sort of negative spiral even if overall he does okay on the trade. Now, <laughs> I know, haha, ha, reduce the number of observations. Who doesn't check the, the portfolio a thousand times a day? Easier said than done, I realize that. But it does help to learn a little bit about this neurology and a little bit about this psychology. So when you start feeling those feelings, you realize, hey, this is perfectly natural to feel this way. What if I turned off my screens went to the gym or went to hang out with a loved one or a significant other or both. <laughs> anyway, when you draw down, especially to the open profits and you get stopped out, as I've been saying quite a bit, ask yourself, where are you now versus where you were? I was a little bummed out to get stopped out of riot because I was hoping, I know there's a word, hope, uh, one of our recent trades. It overall was an okay trade, but Damn, we gave up a lot of open profits on that, hoping or anticipating or wishing, whatever you want to call it, that it would turn into a longer term winner and it just failed to materialize. But that's okay. Overall, we made money. If we would have got in, ridden it up, ridden it down, we would have lost money overall. If you can make money overall in a trade, you're one step closer to that big winner, okay? So be careful if you monetize, and we're all guilty of that. I'm going to show you some monetization here in just one second, right? 
but try to monetize down to the stop. Like I showed the ARLP, you're up uh, 20 grand or whatever it is, and your stop, if you get stopped out, you'll make 16 grand. Well, try to say, okay, I'm gonna monetize that. If I get stopped out, at least I'll make 16 grand on it, plus the dividends, plus the, the IPT, of course. And I'll show you that one in one second. So this is this is what we live for. This is why we bother. Now, we did have some losses coming into this. I don't make it look like it's always this rosy. Uh, Cron followed mechanically, did lose overall. It did, if you took, use a little discretion, it made money maybe before stopping out. But these are a couple of winners. And Verve, it, I'm going to use that word hope again, looks like it's it's just getting started, but up 60%. So that's pretty good. And you can see the ARLP is up about 420% based on tonight's mark to market. And then here are the next two big winners down here. A little tease there. So I showed this recently quite a bit. I showed it in the stock chart show. And this was a hidden benefit of this stock. And I had forgotten about this August dividend. I looked at my account when I was putting this presentation together a few days ago. And I'm like, holy crap, I've got another $400 on this stock. It's better than the Pokemon. You know, I can do that across multiple accounts. It begins to add up. It's $14 in dividends, most dividends I've ever gotten in my entire life. Now, you can see down here, I did take partial profits and I only locked in 763. I got in a little bit late and I don't know if I got out a little bit earlier or not, but that's not where the real money is. The real money is in that 20K and hopefully, uh, as I word again, I'm saying hopefully way too much tonight, but hopefully, there it is again. <laughs> he said it again. <laughs> Sounds like the Knights of Knee. <laughs> but hopefully it'll continue to keep on keeping on. There it is right there. So I took a snapshot yesterday around midday. It was at 2560. And you can see I did get in slightly bit higher at 494. Okay. And I had 20,660 open profits. Now I just said don't monetize. Well, I'm not monetizing. Yes, I am. But <laughs> I'm trying to show you what's what's possible. And then I hate to use the word hope, but maybe we'll be up to 25,000 at some point. And then if we stop out, we'll make at least 20 and then that'd be maybe 30, 25, 40, whatever, 35. Eventually we'll get stopped out. I just wanna show you what's possible longer term if you keep chipping away at it. Now it's hard trading momentum because it can be streaky and you might have to wait a while before you get in one of these big winners or a few of these big winners. So anyway, you add all that up, $23,000 round number. All right, any questions on any of that stuff? George says, my lifesaver is position size. Yeah, and you know, here's the thing, George. And I know you're a sponge and I know you're trading all these different things, even though you shouldn't, but that's okay. And uh, George has been nice enough to say, Dave, you can give me a little tough love because every night I beat up George, I'm like, you know, and every night I'm thinking like, God, don't beat these clients up because you're going to lose. <laughs> but longer term, I want you to be here. And I think a little tough love every now and then is necessary. And believe me, I need a little tough love every now and then too. And, and seeing some of the mistakes being made reminds me, hey, Dave, you don't make those same mistakes too, and which I, we're all guilty of sometimes. But yeah, the secret to trading, well, I always say this, no secret to trading, and then I give you some secrets. But the secret to trading is surviving long enough until you get it. And as I've said before, it kind of pains me. People come into the service and I show a stinker, show a stinker, show a stinker, or whatever. And, and believe me, I, I feel your pain because I'm taking them too, right? And then all of a sudden, I knock it out the park. Well, the day before, the person who just came in the service quits. And if they would have stuck around, they would have had a really huge, big winner. And in one case, I know somebody quits. And he didn't actually quit the service. He just stopped trading it and went on vacation. And then literally that night, the next two stocks I picked turn into home runs. And so that's the nuance of the methodology. You just got to, you must be present to win. You got to chip away at it, chip away at it, chip away at it. <laughs> George says, hit me. All right, you asked for it, buddy. <laughs> John says first thrusts and similar seem to be the play. IPOs suck lately. Okay. I, I'm glad you brought that up because and, and I asked her to give me more feedback and, and she hasn't gotten back with me yet. I hope she does. 
somebody joined the service, quit the service because it wasn't their style. And I'm like, okay, well, what is your style? And you got to also realize the style changes. Okay. You go in and look at when we bought ARLP. I don't remember any, maybe CPE was one before that or whatever, another one of those big winners. And you think, okay, this guy buys big, thick energy and coal companies. Okay. And he looks like a value investor or something. And that, and that's, that's what he does. Well, now he's buying wild and crazy biotech gene editing companies, which I didn't even know they were gene editing until today. But Verb, V-E-R-B, is a gene editing company. And guess what? Gene editing is a really hot topic right now, okay? So it's kind of like the guys feeling up on, the blind guys feeling up on the elephant, and one feels a trunk, and one feels a rope, and uh the the trunk is uh what i forget that the legs are like trees and the trunk is uh a vine or, or the tails of vine anyway you get the idea i forget what's what but depending on when you're looking at trading momentum trading my core methodology it's going to look a lot different and sometimes without even me realizing it until i saw i can never think of his name on the fly darn i can see his face he works for NASDAQ, but he works for Dorsey Wright. And he gave a speech about how value becomes momentum at times. So it's like these energy stocks just flatline forever. And then all of a sudden they turn into momentum stocks. Okay. So momentum becomes value and value becomes momentum. And in his speech, he said, if you never want to make any money whatsoever, you buy a, uh, a fund that does momentum and value and those two are going to be complete opposites at all time quite often and hopefully that makes sense so yeah first thrust right now it's like this guy only buys these stocks that have bottomed and are going up from lows well that's what the market is offering and i'm glad you said john's our john ross is our ipo expert in the facebook group oh i didn't mean to say your name uh john uh john's a good guy he lives on uh 115 uh wallaby lane no <laughs> No, John does a lot of a lot of work with the IPOs, and I've been meaning to to chime in to Facebook and ask you guys around 50 minutes before the close of the last several weeks. I can't find a decent IPO to save my life. John said that's okay if I if I give out his information. If I uh, what do they call it, if I dox him, as long as I send him some beer. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it was if it was easy to do, I would send you some beer because uh, I think I owe you one. I'm sure I've gotten a few IPOs off of you. But no, that's a great thing about the group is it's like, what's wrong with me? Why can't I find an IPO? Well, there's none that are working right now. So that's fine. And again, like I was saying earlier, it's kind of like, well, this guy just trades a bunch of crazy IPOs. Well, this guy just trades a bunch of low level energy stocks. It all depends what the market is offering at the time. So every methodology can have its nuances. And keep in mind that those nuances will shift a little bit within much bigger nuances. And hopefully that makes a little sense. The, what I'm trying to get to here is you have to wrap your head around your methodology, good, bad, and indifferent. And more importantly, you have to live with it. And the living with it is the the tough part. Believe me. And there's some jokes I can make about life's expense, but I'll save that for in-person presentations. All right. Uh, you trade what you see. Yeah, George. Exactly. Exactly. Okay, we'll take a look at those. Uh, John's given us some examples of some recent IPOs, or uh, I think those are IPOs, if memory serves. Yeah, we'll take a look at those. All right, any thoughts, questions, music antidotes on anything we said so far? Okay, let's shift gears. Now I'm gonna tell you how to change your trading and your life for free. And George, you just started doing this. How's it going? I think George is, is just starting up with this. Okay, you ready? Two steps. You need to wake up a little early. Now, sometimes mine take a little longer because I get a little preoccupied and go off on some tangents. And sometimes I end up writing a little bit more than, than three pages, spoiler alert. But wake up a little early. It might take you 30 minutes. And step two is write three handwritten pages. 
Now, I did this years ago. I don't know if it was exactly three pages. I did this. I, it was right around the time I was thinking about marrying my wife because I found one of those pages a while back. And when we were moving and my wife saw it too, it was like, I'm thinking about making things a little bit more serious with the Mars. And uh, for some reason, I quit doing them. And, and I regret that to this day. I don't know why I stopped. I guess I got busy or something. And then uh, in more recent times, it's been a few years, but I got a copy of The Order's Way by Julia Cameron. And I only read the first 10 pages or so, whatever she talked about during the morning pages, which are three pages. Now, I did look at the book recently and I noticed she's got some kind of quirky things in there about these morning pages that I haven't fully adopted. Like, like she says, make up some characters. Like one character is like a multiple personality yourself. That's like a doubter and one's over enthusiastic or whatever. And there was actually some uh, commercial recently. I wish I could remember what it was for. I think it was realtor.com or one of these, these house selling companies. And, uh, there were there were like ten versions of the lady sitting around the conference pool. It's like, ooh, it's got a moat around, and then uh, one of them goes, "Well, you'll probably drown," you know. So it's it's kind of like she's like makeup characters and all. I I wouldn't go that far, but if that helps you to do these, then by all means, I'm just gonna give you my perspective on it because she reminded me that I need to do these pages again. Now. I've been getting a few emails from a few of you, George included, that said, I don't know what to write. Don't overthink it. Don't overthink it, okay? Keep the pen down if you can and just power through it, okay? So you don't know what to write. Well, what about all that shit that was in your head when you lie awake at 3.30 a.m., okay? And, and that's gonna change your life right there, okay? You're lying in bed. You're worried about the kids. You're worried about a problem with your house that's brand new. It shouldn't be a problem. You're worried about whatever, you know, and you're just lying in bed. Well, when you get up, whatever time you get up, a couple hours later, write all that down, okay? Affirmations is really good. If you reach a point where you don't know what to write next, have a couple little affirmations. I will, I state your name, will be worth X amount in X years. And in return, I am going to do this. I'm going to follow my plan. I'm going to work hard to find the best stocks. When there's nothing to do, I'm not going to do anything and go on and on and on and on. And maybe have a paragraph of that in your head. And you're going to be surprised. You're going to just keep adding to that and adding to that and adding to that to get better and better and better. Uh, recent trades, obviously, good, bad, and different. And the most important one of all, stupid. Stupid. My wife had had a boss probably 20 years ago, <laughs> maybe a little longer. And every Monday morning, she'd come in and talk about what our two teenage kids did. I don't know, jumping off the roof into the pool or getting in some sort of trouble. And she would she would tell the whole story, and then she would end with "stupid." <laughs> We've got to spit on that one, anyway. But the stupid things you did that you shouldn't have done. And as Livermore said once, sometimes a speculator makes mistakes and knows he's making them, that's gonna come out in these pages. And it could be a little brutal, but over time, you're gonna do things that are a little bit less stupid. Things to do, you know, it, it, sometimes it might just warp into your to-do list, that's fine. You gotta get that all out of your head. The more you get out of the head, the clearer your head's gonna be to face your day either trading or whatever else you have to deal with. Believe me, this is this is golden. It's not easy, okay? The hardest part is getting started. You know what? I'll lie in bed. You know, I know you really want to party with me now. But I'll lie in bed waiting for 4.50 is when I usually get up every morning. And I might get up at 4.30 just or be lying in bed at 4.30. And I, I know I'm a nerd, but I'm actually looking forward. I can't wait to start writing. Now, did I always feel that way? No. Am I interviewing myself? Yes. But when I first got started, it started back again. It was very hard to do these. And I questioned, is it worth it? And what a waste of time. And I don't feel like being up so early and blah, blah, blah. But it is. 
Now, random thoughts. We're all trained to to write in a certain way, and and I used to quit or drop, I should say, a college class. I'd first day I'd walk out and walk in and say, "Do we have a term paper due?" And they'd say yes, and I'd say, "Nope, I'm out of here," because I I hated writing that bad because I was so bad at it. Until one time, I wrote a paper. It was crap. I rewrote it. It was crap. I rewrote it. I rewrote it a hundred times, and I figured that because I rewrote it a hundred times, it was just complete crap, you know. So I handed the turd in, and I got an A plus. And I was telling a buddy of mine, who's an English major, and I said, "WTF?" I said, "This thing is crap," and I got an A plus on it. It's like one of the first term papers I've ever done in my life, and I got an A plus. And he said, Dave, there are no there are no good writers. There's only good read writers. So nobody's judging you on what you're writing. So when we all go to write, we feel like we've got to just come out with these eloquent thoughts and they have to flow and it has to be beautiful. No, even if you're writing for the New York Times, or I don't know if there's any respected newsletters, newsletters, newspapers left, but assuming that that's a respected newspaper, you just get your thoughts out and then massage them later if you must. And a lot of the, the presentations like I'm doing tonight and maybe I haven't done a random thoughts column in a while, but writings that I do that I haven't published yet, they come out of these morning pages and I just get a rough draft down, just whatever's in my head. And then if you're worried about, if you feel like you need to make a transition from one sentence to another, or if you have another thought, just write RT for random thoughts. And if you're trying to fill up the pages, you know, don't go overboard, but write out random thought and then put your random thought down. And it's gonna be amazing how freeing this is. One thing I've been thinking about a lot lately is not to get too philosophical on you, but if you, trading takes a lot out of you and you really have to be on your game and you need to be in shape physically you need to watch i know i'm not probably not the guy to tell you all these things or not the best role model i should say but i'll tell you this I, i've got a, a a shoulder injury now i had a foot injury and 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 shoulder was kind of bothering me a little bit and you know i was really worried about my foot and told the doctor about my shoulder and all of a sudden he's more worried about that he cut me off of weights for two weeks i i work out religiously believe it or not every day and I'm really bummed out that I'm not working out. I'm not getting in, so I'm writing that down in my notes or whatever. So I'm gonna have to find, you know, God forbid, aerobics or something to do, some sort of aerobic activity. I mean, not not like, eh, eh. <laughs> but anyway, the where I'm getting getting with this is that I think that your performance is based on on how you feel. This this ankle, which is fine now, was really really bothering me, and I don't know what I did to it, or how I did to it, or what. But it was it was hurting. It, it, the, the the hurt to walk on became a hurt all day, and so that was maybe affecting my trading. So I wrote all that down. And if ever I want to go through the pain of going through why I lost money over a period of time, I think it'd be great to have that documented. Okay, it's like well, if you're feeling good and you're shape in shape and everything else, diet, exercise, rest, relaxation, or whatever, and you're trading. You, you, you're going to be surprised. I'd be willing to bet more often than not, your trading is probably be pretty good too, or better at least than it was when you weren't feeling good. So this this all dovetails perfectly in the trading, but it also dovetails perfectly into life. Frustrations, aggravations, trials and tribulations. Write it down. And by the way, just know that these are private thoughts, so write whatever you want. Yeah, I'm a little careful, <laughs> just in case. But one time we were in a rental house, so everything was kind of a mess or whatever. And uh, I remember writing something in there, and I said, uh, you know, my daughter's, I don't say this so I get anybody in trouble. It's like my daughter's grandmother, without putting your names out there, is going to shit a chicken when she finds out about blank. And my daughter found the notebook <laughs> and she was like, what is this? And I'm like, oh, well, uh, first of all, you should have been reading my notebook. And second of all, she is going to shit a chicken, but that's another story altogether. All right. Uh, you know, be positive when you're, when you're doing these pages. 
and I catch myself every now and then being negative. So, so, so try to keep them positive. Like, how do I get better versus why do I suck? Okay. And maybe say something like, what steps can I take to improve my execution? What commitment devices? And it doesn't have to be anything that that that's that's a huge deal. For instance, I missed opening gap reversals a few years ago. So in the morning pages, I had a great epiphany, right? Well, a little epiphany, a minor epiphany. And I said, Dave, what if you set an alarm at 825, five minutes before the open? And when that alarm goes off, stop everything you're doing and go do go do your opening gap reversal analysis. And, and I've got a screen right next to this screen, another computer where all those scans are ran right before the market opens. And it's like, as soon as that alarm goes off on my trading station, I'm like, oh, I better do that opening gap reversal now. I got five minutes, it's all it takes is five minutes, not even that long to know what I'm gonna be trading as opposed to all of a sudden the opening bell goes off and I'm like, oh crap, I forgot to check for opening gap reversals and I'm all out of sync and everything. So there's a lot of little simple things you could do, write it down in these pages, set alerts, near your entries or set hard entries, set hard stops if you need to. And as I said a minute ago, set alarms, okay? There's been a few days where, because I'm so busy trading or business or, or behind the eight ball on deadlines or whatever the case may be, especially with international work, I'm not getting around to doing my IPO analysis or I'm scrambling to do it five or 10 minutes before the close. So I set an alarm and at 2.30 every day, an alarm goes off. It's like, okay, stop, Dave. Go take a look at the IPO. See if there's anything you want to trade going into the close. And then at 2.55, five minutes before the close, 3.55 Eastern, obviously, the alarm goes off again to let me know if there's anything that needs to be closed out that's a day trade or an intraday trade, I should say. I'll close it out right around the close. And these IPO strategies, you get in around the close, the buy B, for instance. So that lets me know if I want to get in something or out something around the close. Just little stupid things like that comes out of the morning pages. And, and another one that came out is like, hey, check the Facebook group. See, see what John Ross is up to. And I know a lot of you other guys, I give John all the credit. But there's, a, there's some other guys and girls out there looking at the IPOs, and I appreciate that. It's like, oh, well, let me check the Facebook group around the close to see if there's anything I may have missed, and, and maybe even check it earlier than that. So just little silly things like this. And, and, and believe me, you will get some amazing epiphanies, don't get me wrong, but most of it's going to be this little Kaizen, Kaizen Way type of things. Read the Kaizen Way. I forget the guy's name at the moment. Robert Marr, maybe? Anyway, the Kaizen way, you can go to www.davelander.com books dash to, sorry, davelander.com slash books to read. And I'll put the link in post on that. But anyway, things like what can I do to trade less and make more? And boy, that's the secret of trading right there. Figure that out. If you figure that out, write me a letter. Um, insanity versus Churchill's definition of success is something I struggle with too. Einstein's definition of insanity is doing the same thing over and over, expecting and expecting a different outcome. And Churchill's definition of success is moving from one failure to another without any loss of enthusiasm. Well, I think my core methodology kind of fits within Churchill's definition of success because you will have to move from one loss to another, but it does wake me up, obviously, when I had a few losses to make darn sure my stock picking is the best of the best for anything that goes into that core methodology, the, the service, so to speak. All right, a couple of tips and tricks, zero pressure, zero expectation, zero judging. I helped a few people try to get started in this and they failed miserably because they're putting too much pressure on themselves, too much expectations, uh, you know, too much judgment. I got a dog that likes to go in and out. She goes outside, she barks, you know, so I'm and I've got to get up and go stop her from barking because the rest of the household gets up about three hours later than me or maybe four. And, and that's by design. I'm fine with that. Believe me, I like my time alone early in the morning, especially collect my thoughts, drink my coffee or whatever. But I'm like, you know, damn that dog or effing dog. And, and 
you know, sometimes she'll uh, she'll float her nail biscuit. You know, I'm like, oh God, dog farted. You know, it's just horrible. <laughs> I'll write that down. You know, it's for you. So write whatever you want. Um, if you're going to talk about somebody shitting a chicken, just make sure they don't uh, see it. <laughs> Do not preload, okay? I, I wanted to get one of these digital notebooks, and I'm trying to work a deal with the company to to get a, a good deal for both you and I, uh, should I buy a second one, and if you guys uh, want one. But my brother-in-law, I'd never seen one. I know I wanted one, but I'd never seen one. My brother-in-law brought one to dinner one time to show me. And I played with a little bit. I'm like, man, this is really cool. And and so the next day I ordered one. And once I got it in, I, I just couldn't believe how great it was for my morning pages. I could put tags on pages. I could cut and paste stuff. I could move pages. And, you know, like today, like this presentation you're watching now was like, as I'm writing my morning pages and thinking about things to, to talk about tonight, I'd put it on that page. And then I, then I take that page and then it becomes these slides. And so all this stuff comes from it. And I told my brother-in-law, because I'm a big champion of these morning pages. Hey man, you need to do these too. And uh, he's like, yeah, I, you know, I'm studying to be a deacon and I've got, I have like an hour's worth of reading. So I'm gonna do an hour's worth of reading and then I'm gonna write about my readings. And I'm like, no, no, don't, don't preload. Okay. This is not your, your deacon pages. Okay. This is, this is just to get what's in your head out of your head. Now, if you wake up and you're thinking about your deacon stuff, you got to do it, whatever knock yourself out, but don't preload with anything. I try, try is a keyword in that sentence. And unless I take home some something I shouldn't have taken home, or maybe I'm long futures gonna trailing stop overnight. So I am gonna check the markets, but I try not, I try to just come off as a grab a notebook and go in the house and write. But try not to preload it with anything. Stay analog, as I alluded to here. Don't check your voicemail, don't check your email, don't check whatever's going on on Twitter or Facebook or wherever. Just do these things. Stay analog if you can. Now, I know my pad is digital, but I'm analog in what I'm doing. You might write down things to do. Again, random thoughts, how you feel, how you slept, frustration, aggravations, trials, and tribulations, just anything in your head. All right, let's shift gears real quick. Let's take a look at crypto. Speaking of ogres, do you see A&F today? We'll take a look at that in one second. You reminded me of Artie Johnson's line from Martin Rowan's Laugh-In. Very interesting, but stupid. <laughs> I'm going to use that. I like that. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Very interesting, but stupid. Yeah, very good. All right, let's let's uh, let's flip over to crypto. I, I really don't have much to say about crypto tonight. I do want to take a look at, uh, obviously, Bitcoin here. If there's anything crypto you want me to look at, let me know now. Really don't have a lot to say tonight. You know, crypto heats up. It's great. Um, here's the problem, though. It's like I've been so bored looking at crypto lately. I'm not looking at it like I used to. And, of course, it's going to take off without me. So it's like I need some sort of commitment device for that. Maybe need to set yet another alarm to remind me to look at crypto every morning or at some point during the day. So Bitcoin I was encouraged about for a while because it kept trying to break out, break away from that 30 EMA. But then it imploded the other day. Anybody, not that it matters, but anybody know what happened that caused it to implode? <laughs> but it's looking a little bit more questionable now. The Elon, or the Sheev is the one that we, we were all excited about, right? The Sheev was starting to take off. It went and then came right back in. So that's a bit of a bummer. Now we take a look at, this is one thing that I used to do religiously is just look at them by percent change to see if there's anything worth going after. And again, I just really haven't been trading them that much lately. This looks okay. Nice little thrust higher, a little bit of a pullback, thrust higher, a little bit of a pullback. Lots of overhead supply to deal with, but nothing exciting. Is there anything you want to look at? You never watched the variety show Laugh-In growing up around 1967, 1973? It was a little before my time, but but I watched a little bit of it. I just don't remember. I don't remember any of the lines or anything. I remember seeing a little hee-haw, <laughs> which was aggravating. But anyway, okay, going once, going twice, nothing here. All right, let's take a look. Let's jump into live charts. And uh, let me switch over here. Okay, let's go to... Okay. 
not a tremendous amount to report in the markets. Obviously, we had a decent day today, okay? So we were stretched to the upside, in other words, overbought, and then we had a nice little correction, and then that VIX stuff kind of was kind of nice, kind of dovetailed nice into nicely into this little bit of a rally we had today, and that's what I was looking for and getting long futures later in the day. I got stopped out earlier in the day at a loss, believe it or not. It's like, you know, here's what's frustrating, okay? Tomorrow I'll probably write about this in my morning pages. How the hell do I lose money? my first trades here in futures, right? When everything was kind of lined up. But I'll do a post-mortem and, and maybe write a little bit about it tomorrow. NASDAQ deposit, nice little rally. Notice we came down, kiss that 30 EMA, take it off again. Russell 2000, same sort of action, didn't quite kiss the EMA, but Russell so far is in an uptrend, okay? Uh, yeah, if there's any stock picks, start, uh, start punching them in now. We're almost ready for that. Energies have been pretty amazing. They look toppy for quite a while. In fact, we tried shorting some or at least one and it did not work. And then they turned around and went straight back up. But they've been kind of melting up as of late. It'll be interesting to see what's going to happen in our next pullback there. We're still long ARLP again forever as we have been. A lot of areas look like, look like the overall market. There's no need to go through all of them, obviously, because most of them Kind of took off, pull back to the 30 EMA, and now they're trying to take off again. Semiconductors had a decent day today. They were looking a little bit more questionable than the rest of the sectors, but they had a pretty decent day today. And like I said earlier, that's why I went along the SOXL because it was moving nicely. And let's see. So you can see SOXL here. This is just by... I backed off a little bit in the CTF stuff, but when I do see something kind of nice and strong like Sox L, and I know I have the wind at my back a little bit with the VIX stuff, I'll go in and do an intraday trade. I would much rather look at like my Landry list and if I'm going to make an intraday trade and trade like a Russian doll off of that or try to find something that's moving on the Landry list as opposed to, or my momentum list which is a much bigger part of my Landry list. It's where the Landry list comes from. 2,000 stocks whittled down to whatever I like for the day. It goes into the momentum list, which is about 100, 150 stocks. And then the Landry list is, is down to whatever comes out of that, as I talked about the scanning in Facebook a couple of days ago. Anyway, let's get back to the major MIGs. It's just uh, one or two more things to look at in here uh any other just keep the stock picks coming if you want to if there's anything you want to look at since the facebook group started we really don't have stock picking time in here anymore bonds had a decent day today they kind of look like a head and shoulders bottom and i do like that this right side is lower than the left i wouldn't rush out and buy bonds just yet though these bigger picture technical analysis type of patterns as you likely know can take a while to form. So it's bottoming. I wouldn't say it's bottom just yet. I mean, obviously it's still in a longer term downtrend, but bottoming out, that's bonds. All right. So earlier, Jeff said, speaking of ogres, did I see A and F today? Uh, I did not, or I'm sure my scan caught it. Let me see. Yeah, it caught it. And uh, not enough time tonight, because I'm nearly out of time. But I'll show you my scan next week if uh, somebody reminds me. And it did catch ANF. Now, did I play it? No. Reason I didn't play it was because it's a burning dog. Okay. I don't want to try to catch that falling knife and catch that bounce. Yes, it might have worked. Okay. But it's not my style. I would much rather trade something. I'm trying to think of the name of the stock. It escapes me, but there was one from a few days ago that was set up in a service. It didn't make an opening get reverse, but I want something that's that's set up. Let me just, we'll just take a look at Verb, I guess. So imagine, let's see, Verb was a was a was a burning dog today. I would not take that. Okay. So imagine, let's say on this day here, just use your imagination. Let's say on this day here. My little scan shows verb down at 1850. Okay. Nice, nice trend higher, selling off in a nice pullback. Looks like a great setup. Bam. It gets hit really hard. I'm going to look to play that 
reversion to the mean because I still have the longer term trend possibly behind me. I don't want to try to catch that falling knife. So yeah, I did see Amber Crumbery and Fitch because my my I'm pointing to a screen you can't see and I can't get it over here because it's on two different computers. But it is the first one in that in that gap down scan for today. But again, you don't want to catch, you don't play these burning dogs. I did for a while and I got burnt, okay? John says, uh, using as an example, L-U-C-Y. Yeah, okay, so John was saying that, hey, IPOs have kind of stunk lately. And you can see, and this is why we don't buy until what, five days? And then the other rule is it has to at least take out the day one high if the day one high sets the high for the week. So what would you do with this? Nothing, okay? That silly little rule back when I did the IPO course has just absolutely amazed me and it keeps you out of a lot of trouble. CHG is another one. For example, he's given us tonight. Thank you, John. Okay, look, look, day one sets a high for the first week. Leave it alone. Now, in my bottom out, I think Verve did that. So take a look at Verve. We'll beat the dead horse on this one. No, Verb did run up. I wonder if I traded it back here. I need to go in and look at that. If it's, we had more time, I'd go in and do it. I'm going to make a note, and we'll look at Verb, and I'll show you my scans next week for the opening gaps. There's always a lot to talk about. There's a potential for a F. Ford, <laughs> Ford's actually looking okay. Uh, I don't like the gap down, though. Okay, any more? All right, as usual, I want to thank everybody for coming. I appreciate you taking time out of your busy schedule. Anything unanswered, bring it up in Facebook if everybody could benefit from it, if it's something a little bit more personal. Facebook message, message me if you're not in the group and not a member of DaveLearner.com, a gold member at least, then you could email me and I'll, I'll take a look at that. Also, leave a comment here on YouTube. I look at all comments and I answer all comments. And please like the video and subscribe it so the algorithms will put me ahead of uh, some of these scumbags. <laughs> Your chart shows always educational. Thanks. You're welcome. In a very interesting day, but not stupid. <laughs> Bit to say a potential for a first list pattern, IPO pattern. Yeah, you know, once they bottom out, uh, like the Verve, that was the point I was going with Verve, is that, okay, it did rally initially. I forget if we played it or not. I think I did. Uh, I, and I'll verify for next week's show. But notice that it got a little ahead of itself, bottomed out, and now it's beginning to take off again. And we played this first thrust, if you want to call it that. It's kind of an extreme first thrust. I just call that a pullback, okay? All right, everybody have a great night and I'll see uh, all you guys and girls tomorrow in Facebook, everybody else. Uh, please uh, come to the show next week. Be happy to have you here. We'll love to have you here. Thank you so much. And may the trend be with you.